And functions are based on a relation. And a relation is a correspondence between two sets. Okay. Those two sets for us in math world would be domain and range. Those are our two sets. Okay. Domain, if you remember from algebra one, refers to what part of a function? The x values, yeah. Domain is the x values. So, I mean, the range would be the y. So domain, left and right, x direction, range up and down, y direction. Okay, so uh, when we're talking about domain and range, that's what we're talking about. So uh, a relation can be written as maybe a set of ordered pairs. So like curly braces, and then you've got some ordered pairs in there. So like three, negative two, five, six, negative seven, nine. So we got a set of ordered pairs. This is a relation. Okay. Uh, if we look at that and we say, okay, we're going to talk about the domain of that. What's the domain? Yeah, 3, 5, and negative 7, and, and my OCD won't let me do that. I'm going to put them in order. Not that it matters, technically, uh, but I just like to put things in numerical order that when they can be. Okay, so domain is the X values. Range Yeah, so negative two, six, and nine. So when we're talking about functions, we talk about domain, we're talking about the X values. What are they doing? Talk about range, we're talking about the Y values. What are they doing? Okay, with this, you've know, got just a set of plain, plain set of ordered pairs, uh, and we can get a domain and range out of that. Okay, so when you talk about a relation, there. Are, when, you know, the name of the lesson is not relations, it's functions. Okay, so what makes a relation a function? Does anybody remember? Okay, so if we're talking about a, a, a function from X into Y. So normal ordered pair form is what I'm saying. From X into Y means it's normal equation stuff. It's normal ordered pair style. Because there can be different types of functions. Uh, we're talking about normal functions like X comma Y stuff. Okay. Um, that associates each X with one y value another way to remember that is it doesn't repeat x's okay way well, i tell my algebra one kids this and, and if you had me for algebra one you may remember this that if you want to function properly then you will not repeat your x's Oh, good one. Yeah. Don't repeat your x's. If you want to function properly, don't repeat your x's. So functions don't repeat x values. So if we look at this relation. Is that a function? Yes, there's no x values that are repeated. So that is a function. It's a relation that is a function. Not every relation is a function. Uh, Every function, however, is a relation. Always has to be that way. <laughs> every a relation is just a set of order pairs. Not every relation is a function, but every function is a relation because a function is a special type of of, of set of order pairs. That's right. That's right. So every function is a relation because it's a, a set of order pairs. Uh, 
Now, that set of ordered, pa ordered pairs may be disguised as an equation, but uh, let's play a game. Let's play, is this a function? This will be example A. So here's our set of ordered pairs, 2, 3, negative 3, 5, 6, 4, 8, negative 2. Yes, yeah, I would, yeah, anything that's on the screen, I would write if I'm taking notes. If I'm in this class, uh, anything that's on the screen, I'd write down. It is a function Y. The X's do not repeat. The X's don't repeat, so this one is a function. On a set of ordered pairs, it is. If it's a set of ordered pairs, the only way to tell is, is do the X's repeat. Now, when we get into equations and we get into graphs, that's a different game. So, different rules. Does it matter if the Y is the same number as X? The only thing that matters is X's can't repeat. Anything else can happen. So, the Y's don't matter. Y's don't matter when we're talking about is it a function. There's some other games that we'll play later on in the semester that it does matter, but today it doesn't. So here we have negative 3, 7, 8, negative 1, negative 2, 7, 8, 0. Why? Eight's repeating. Does it matter that the 7's were repeating? No. No. Why? Because they are what kind of values? Y values. Y values. It doesn't matter. Okay. See you. Contrary to a lot of my freshmen's beliefs, I'm a good teacher. All right. All right. So another way that a relation could be written is uh, a mapping is what this is called. And it's where you have a domain bubble and a range bubble. You may have seen this in algebra one, a little bit in algebra two, not much. At all in algebra two with this. This is more of an alpha one type type way of representing it. Uh, but it's you got a domain bubble and a range bubble, so that's a really easy way of looking at things. Uh, so the domain may just be these values: uh, three, negative five, and eight. And the range bubble may have uh, seven, negative nine, and ten. And then the mapping, what they do is they connect them. It's like uh, it's one of those matching puzzles where you just connect with the lines. So we're going to connect with lines. So three is going to go to seven. So the ordered pair that goes with that is three, seven is what that means. Okay. And then uh, five is going to go to negative nine. And then eight, uh, let's have it go to seven. And then. Three also goes to ten. So is that a function? No. Why not? Well, not because of crisscrossing necessarily, but then there's how many arrows coming from one of the x values? Two. Two arrows coming from one of the x values. So that tells us right there that it's not a function. And we'll highlight three there. If it would be well, the crisscross doesn't necessarily matter. It's just that there's two arrows coming from one one domain value. Uh, it doesn't matter if they cross or not because, like, actually my original example had everything yeah. going straight across. I just crossed them up because I was bored with it. Uh -oh. All right. Well, not, not, not bad. Okay, so get a mapping. Really, really, really easy thing. Uh, let's look at one more mapping, and then we'll go to a different game. Domain, range, 3, 5, 7, negative 2, 6, draw some lines. Uh, 3 and 6 go together, 5 and negative 2, 7 and 6. Is that a function? Yes. No repeated x So we're good. So that's our test. When it's a mapping or a set of ordered pairs, we're looking for repeated x values. That's all we're looking for. Nothing really strenuous about that. Okay. Now let's look at 
little little change in the game. We'll just go with an example here. Uh, y equals 3x minus 2. Something very familiar to us. We should know what that is uh, and what form that equation is written in. What form is that equation written in? Slope. Slope intercept form. What part of that's the slope? Three. Three in front of the x is the slope. What's the negative two? The y one. Y intercept, which is b. And when you're talking about slope intercept form. Okay, so this is a relation. It's not written in a set of ordered pairs, but it represents a set of ordered pairs. It represents the, the set of ordered pairs for y's when this is done to the x's. So like we could plug in x values and get a and get just a ton of ordered pairs out of this. We could plug in x equals one, two, three, negative four, you know, just pick all kinds of x values and get a set of ordered pairs. But it also represents a graph. How's that graphed? We're just going to sketch it. We don't have to be incredibly precise here. So I'm just going to draw a, a you know really simple sketch of it. So that it's, we've got, you know, I'm trying to just be as close to precise as I can be. How do I graph that line? Okay. Up three and over one. So it creates this line. And that red line there represents all of the ordered pairs that we could ever create for this equation. Does anybody remember a test for functions? Huh? Vertical line test. So we got an equation. We have a graph that goes with that. And then the test for that graph is a vertical line test. And that vertical line test is you take you know, stay straight. That's straight enough. Anywhere I can place a vertical line on that graph, it can only touch once. If it touches more than once anywhere on the graph, then it fails. And that's a repeated x value when that happens. So anywhere I put this line, it only touches it one time everywhere on the whole graph. If I extended the graph on down further, it still touches one place anywhere I lay it. So that passes the vertical line test. So that is a function. Do what now? Say, say it again. At one at one spot here, yeah, there's where x is one. Okay. But you've got all of these other the red line represents all of the ordered pairs that go with this. So it doesn't matter where you place that. There's not a place anywhere on that graph that would fail the vertical line test. We'll look at a graph in a second that does fail it. So that you can get it, I think you get a better understanding of it when you see that. So this passes the vertical line test. So if you've got an equation, one of the things you can do is graph it, and then you can use a vertical line test. If you got a graph, you don't even you, you just go ahead and straight vertical line test and check it. So this passes, so this yes is a function. It's a little different game than what we were playing before. Okay. Let's look at this. Uh, I'm just going to sketch a graph, and I'm not even going to put tick marks on my. I'm just going to draw a graph. That blue part of that graph represents a set of ordered pairs. It represents a relation. Is that a function? No, because it fails the vertical line test. So a function is just a straight line. Not necessarily. It can be not straight. I will pass. The, the function, the idea of it being a function, that's the only place I can put that vertical line and it only touch once. Anywhere else I put it, it touches two times. And they have those points that it touches at have the same two x values. So that's the repeated x value part of that. So this fails the vertical line test uh, a lot. So those are those places I'm pointing to. Those, that's where the repeated x value is. So this is not a function. Okay. 
All right. One more of those times. Uh, let's do it with an equation style. Uh, y squared is equal to uh, x squared minus 4. Why not? X can be squared and be a function. It's going to look like a U. Would it? Is it? Yeah, I'm asking you. Y is squared, but X is also squared. Okay, that's a good idea. And simplify things. So I could get rid of the Y squared by doing what? Uh, square root of Y squared is. Yeah. Yeah. Square root of both sides. But if I take the square root of both sides, there's a plus or minus that has to show up. And the square root of x squared minus 4 doesn't work out real nice. Because you can't just take the square root of x squared and take the square root of 4. That's not how that works. So I get this. Huh. So I said plug it in. Plug what in? Pick an x value, plug it in. I think that's going to one. Okay, if I plug in one, one squared, minus one, four, minus four, three. negative three, the square root of negative is actually that's not good. So let's pick a number that, let's pick a bigger number than one. It's going to be like five. That'd be a good one. 25 minus four is 21. So the square root of 21, but it's plus or minus. So if we plug in one x value and got two different y values, is that a function? Yes. No. Yes. So if I plug in the five, I get five and square root of, of twenty-one. We know what what our decimal that is. Doesn't matter. Probably better that it's not a decimal uh, at this point. But we also get the minus side of that. So we get this ordered pair five. Negative square root of 21. So is that a repeated x value? Yes. So this is not a function. Now, when we get a graphing calculator in the next couple of days, uh, we'll look at how to graph that and, and be able to tell with that. Because your graphing calculator graphs that a little bit differently than what you would think it was. Because uh, you can't, there's not a plus minus button. There's a positive button, there's a negative button, but there's not a plus minus button. So you got to graph two different graphs at the same time. It ends up, does y'all right saying it makes a parabola shape? It makes a parabola shape like this this example up here. You could, wouldn't change anything. It makes a parabola whether you factor it or not. X squared, the x squared part is uh, in here is what makes the parabola shape. The square root on the outside is what makes it turn sideways, is what happens there. <laughs> Not this, um, can't say all of them. If it's the, if, if you have both variables squared, then that's, that's in some of your If only one variable is squared, uh, or if there's only like one square root of that, that's not necessarily true. When there's both, both variables squared, then yeah, you can say that all of those are no, not function. Or not be. All right, we got a few minutes left here. Let's let's do a little bit of function uh, notation, function value. We're working today, Coach Max. Unbelievable. He wish he was tomorrow. Um, let's look at function. Notation. Function notation. F of x. And we'll go 3x plus 5. Something simple. F of x is the same thing as what? Y. Okay. Function notation is just fancy y equals. Okay. That's all it is. Now, with that, it allows us to do some things. What that tells us is what that's equal to is a function. 
We know 3x plus 5 is a function. It's a straight line, um, you know, with a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of 3. We know it's a function, but this notation tells us that it's a function. Okay? So we're not guessing whether this is a function or not anymore when we have function notation. And we know it's a function. Let's do some function value. What's f of negative 5? What does that mean? So the negative 5 is the x value. We need to find the y value that goes with it. That's all that means. 3, negative 5, plus 5. Hopefully we can do that. We don't have a calculator yet, but, you know, maybe we can suffer through negative 15 plus 5, negative 10. So the ordered pair that comes from that is negative 5, negative 10. Understand that that's what we're finding there. Okay. Same function, and let's let's throw a kink in it. Let's do x plus four function value. F of x is equal to three x plus five, and we're plugging in x plus 4 in the place of what? x. x. Okay. A little bit of algebra review is what I'm after. Yeah. Right. Vx plus 17. Very easy stuff. Yeah. There is. Why would I do that? Because I'm not trying to get x by itself. I'm just trying to find f of x plus 4. I don't know. Plus. 2x squared minus 3x, or I mean plus 3x. Uh, let's find f of... Uh, 2x. That'll be fun. Good algebra review. Some algebra skills back going. That's a 2x inside of those parentheses. So we're plugging in 2x in the place of x. Should be 2 parentheses 2x squared. Plus three parentheses two x. That looks uh, pretty easy, right? But what happens first? Okay, so when I square two x, what do I get? And then I multiply that by two and get eight x squared plus six x, and we're done. Nice, boring stuff. Let's do, change it up a little bit. Let's do 3x squared minus 5x. Now let's find f of negative x. This is a pretty handy skill to be able to do throughout the course. Plugging in a negative x into the problem. What's that in front of the x, really? A negative 1. Negative 1, yeah. So it's what you're treating it like. So when you square negative x, what do you get? X. Not just x, but x squared. Yeah, so that just turns into 3x squared. Plus 5x. Plus 5x. Pretty easy stuff so far. Those are all the 
Yes, there there are already functions already because of the f of x notation that's on. We're not determining whether they're functions or not. We're just taking function notation and doing some function value with it. Nothing really major out of that. Let's uh let's look at do what now? I didn't know that thing that are written the notation yeah. and tells you it's a function. Yeah, it's it just means it's a function is all it means. All right, so let's look at this one. F of x is equal to 2x squared minus 7x plus 4. And then they, I want to find negative F of x. A little different game there, but still fairly simple. Think about it fundamentally, what it means. That's a negative f of x. What's that mean? Good. Good. Holly said it multiply everything by negative. That's a, that is at the bare bones of it exactly what that means. So maybe we write that extra step in there. I don't, that's the that's the question that was given. This is the original function. This is the find that. That's, that's the question I'm asking, is find, find negative f of x. So that just means negative 1 times everything. So I'm writing that extra step in here so that we know that that's what it's saying. All it does is just change the sign, everybody. And then that's the answer. What we're looking for. In that particular. In the other ones, were you just plugging in numbers? Yeah, I was just picking numbers and plugging in. And then I could, just trying to give you some examples of things that you'll see that you need to know how to do. Um, do f of x is equal to uh, 5x squared minus 6x. Uh, find f of x plus 2. So a little, little more algebra 1 review here. Part of the reason that you're going to see questions like this in this section, uh, but also to get us out our algebra river flowing a little bit here, get us uh, kind of thinking about doing some basic algebra 1 skills as we go here. So what's that mean we do? Okay, so exponents would have to happen first, order of operations. So I'm going to square x plus 2 first. How do you square x plus 2? It's not x squared plus 4. No. X squared plus 4x plus 4. And then times the five. And I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the negative six. And you know, a little explanation on that squaring. It's x plus two times x plus two. And then you're distributing twice or FOIL method, maybe what you heard in Alpha One may may call you FOIL method. It's just distributing the property x times x is x squared, x times two is two x, and here's another two times x, which is where four x comes from. And then 2 times 2 is 4, where well, that's going to go. And then distribute the 5. No, just simplify it. No, you don't have to factor it at the end. Just, just simplify like terms after you've done that. So 5x squared minus 26x plus 8. Check me, I may have made a mistake. Wait, yeah, how'd you get negative 20? It should be positive 20, shouldn't it? That's what happened. Thank you. As you got to remember, the only thing I've done since Christmas break was color Mickey Mouse pictures with my five-year-old and my two-year-old. So... So that'd be plus 14x. And there we go. 
Let's do another one of those before we call it a day. Time for one more. F of X, here's our original function. Let's uh, go back to the old tried and true. 2X squared minus 3X. And let's find F of X, or F of 2X, excuse me, minus 3. Kind of a funky problem. Let's get a lot of 2X minus 3s. Some of you may be able to do more of this in your head than others, and that's fine. I'm going to be strenuous in this class about showing your work as I am. There are times that you want me to show your work. Two x squared, two squared, is four x squared. Distribute again, so eight x squared minus twenty four x plus eighteen. Eight x squared minus thirty x plus twenty seven. Two times twelve is twenty-four and negative six. Twenty-four and negative six would be negative thirty, wouldn't it? No, not this one. No, 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 no. The two x minus three is the x. That is what I'm replacing x with. And then. Yeah. All right. That's a good stopping spot for today, especially since we get leave in two minutes. Um. Woodward has asked me to remind you there will be no hats, hoods, or toboggans worn in the building. Make sure you do not have them on your head in this building. We will go to Skitty Bra.